Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night comes at the end. Let's start. If you live in England, you're probably well aware of this problem already. If not, I don't know whether it's been spread about in your press or not. I do know that for some reason the German press have not found it worthy of being mentioned as of today, which is the 28th of November 2009. However, it's all about these little gadgets. Cell phones, mobile phones, magic phones. They tend to have a different name in almost every country in the world. But we all know what they are. Now, what this report that has been very, very greatly mentioned in the English press is one sponsored by the European Commission. Now, for those of you who live outside Europe and may not be quite aware how things run in, the, in Europe, the European Commission is a sort of self-appointed government, which more or less runs the whole of the European community. They're not elected, they appoint themselves and we let them get away with it at the moment. Now, what they've done is to commission a long-term study on the use of these things. And what this study has shown is with more than 12,000 test cases and over a six-year study that these cause a direct link, or best, the official language is, there is strong evidence of a direct causational link between the use of mobile stroke cell phones and brain cancer, which most of us knew about anyway. The problem is what to do about it. Now, mostly we don't know. When I say we, I mean the whole of humanity. I do, otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here telling you about this, but that's another story. The French government has, on the basis of this report, already banned the use of cell mobile phones in French schools. However, we are being somewhat misled. It's not so that just mobile phones or cordless phones will produce lots of what is called electrosmog. No, that's not the problem at all. The problem is the electrosmog itself, or more precisely, the way in which we create our electricity. And if we go back to the roots of this problem, then we have to look at a banker by the name of J.P. Morgan. Now, at the beginning of the last century, Mr. Morgan was involved in backing a Czech um, scientist by the name of Tesla in the mass production of energy. And Tesla made these devices which drew energy directly out of thin air, as it were, or as we now know, out of the quantum fields, the quantum energy fields. He developed devices to pull energy out of that, which would make any device work. Mr. Morgan very quickly realized that if he let this go any further, we'd be in an area of free energy and he wouldn't be able to charge anybody anything for the use of electrical power. He therefore closed Tesla's operation down, had his uh, machinery destroyed, and Tesla himself ended up dying in poverty in New Jersey a few years later. Instead of this, the Edison style of producing electricity was brought into general usage. Now, this is incredibly inefficient and one of the ways in which it is inefficient is that the electricity which it produces is in itself very chaotic. So it is not so that 
electrosmoker suddenly appeared because we started using mobile and cordless phones. No. We've only begun to seriously notice the problem because of the way these work. A lot of electrosmog get pumped directly into your brain. That's how people have begun to notice it. But the problem has existed for a lot longer than these have existed. All electrical cable, almost all electrical devices, will produce very strong fields of electrosmog because of the way in which electricity is generated and used. Our equipment for using electricity, the devices in your home, are generally around 2 to 3% efficient. That is, at least 97% of the electricity which you purchase is wasted. You don't get anything at all for your money, but you do get a lot of electrosmog. Now, what electrosmog actually is, is the part of the electrical supply that comes through the wires or in the battery of your phone, which is so chaotic that neither the cables which transport it nor the devices which are supposed to be using can actually make use of it. And the more sophisticated, the more sensitive the devices, the greater the amount of electricity which is rejected because it is too chaotic. So a cell phone does not produce electrosmog. It's already there in the way in which we create electricity. It's actually here in the battery. The electricity going from here into the phone at least 20% of it is so chaotic that the phone can't use it. All it can do is to throw this electricity off in the form of wild electron bundles. And that is what we call electrosmog. There is a further problem in this field as well, and that is the scalar waves. Now, in electronic engineering, only eight of the original Maxwell equations are used. Now, Maxwell was a 19th century Scottish physicist who wrote the equation describing the electromagnetic spectrum. Eight of them are actually used in electronic engineering and the rest are ignored because they were considered too esoteric. And amongst other things, these other equations describe the scalar fields. What was not known at the time, what only came to be recognized at the end of the 20th century, was that the human body's own internal communication systems are actually propagated by scalar waves. They're not propagated electromagnetically, but by scalar. You start pumping massive amounts of wild, chaotic scalar energy into the human body, you're going to cause massive problems with your body's own internal communication systems. And systems start going wild. And what is brain cancer? It's a system gone wild because there is so much chaos in it that it loses its coherence and does things which are more or less self-destructive.